What's going on everybody? This is Slappy McPhee from the Retro Arena and we're here for our second part in our video series on the preview for our upcoming Thera 3.0 release. Um, we're going to go ahead and go over a few of the things that uh, we were talking about on the first video, just this kind of synopsis, and uh, then cover, of course, today's stuff that uh, we want to talk about. So with us today, we, we have Qbert. Hey, what's up? He's doing our video streaming. We've got John. Hello. Neon's back again. Hello. And we have Eric with us again today. Well, well not again. Yeah, that's true, not again. <laughs> Eric was here Hello. with us in spirit. So um, some of the stuff, just the synopsis from the, the uh, first part, uh, we went over some versioning talk. We explained a little bit why it's called 3.0 and we have why we skipped 2.0. Uh, we talked about changes in structure and credentials, and uh, that's the reason why you see the WinSCP window up. We're going to go over this a little bit more in depth today. Uh, we talked a little bit about the mounting method, uh, went over a lot of the different things and changes in the settings menu, the new system that we created called RetroHub, uh, the fact that we added, we're adding close to 30 new systems, and we're just shy of 100. Uh, the fact that this will require a new flash and that uh, version 1.6 shortly after the release of 3.0 to the public will have a notification in it stating that it will not have any further updates and that um, people will need to move over to version 3 in order to get any further updates. Uh, very similar, for example, to what users were accustomed to seeing with RetroPie um, where with the, when they moved over to uh, to stretch, right? If you had uh, version 4. Dot whatever, you went in there to do the setup update script, it popped up a message saying, hey, we're no longer supporting this, you need to download the new image. And, uh, you know, just to kind of briefly touch that on that again, one of the reasons why, you know, even though we had said about a year ago when we, we got things going with this that we we're working towards not having to have new flashes at all anymore, since we've officially forked and this is our own thing, um, a lot of it has changed and too much has changed where to make any sense. We also wanted to be sure that we did a build with the new commits for the kernel, a lot of security and other bug related fixes. Uh, there was over 300 of them, so we felt that it was better to do a build from scratch again. Um, we went over almost 10 different systems that were being added. Uh, and so today, we're going to talk about this stuff with the changes in structure and credentials. Um, we're going to go ahead and show off the, uh, the jukebox, which is something that uh, we inherited over from Motion Blue. And uh, we're going to go over a bunch of more systems and uh, talk about a couple other features. So. We'll go ahead and get started on the, the meat and potatoes for today. Um, first off, uh, Qbert, if you could go into the home folder, Pi Gaming. And as you can see, things have really changed. Um, the structure no longer says RetroPie. We've um, stuck to what is required by GPL licensing for open source, but we've created our own directory structure, uh, clean things up a bit on how that's all going to work. So that means that. You know, there's no more RetroPie fo uh, folder itself. Um, if you go into the Retro Arena setup uh, directory there, Hubert, um, you'll also see now too, rather than saying RetroPie setup for the setup script, it's now Retro Arena setup. So these are just a couple of the things that, you know, change change out um, in regards to how that's working. Do you guys have any other additional items regarding the directory structure and stuff that we need to talk about? Well, there's one thing, uh, you don't have to uh, type Retro Arena Setup to get into the setup scripts. You can uh, just type setup and press enter. Oh, okay. Well, I did not go. know that. That's awesome. I didn't, that. I didn't know that. Hold on, let me see something. I have never tested that. Will Broke It did it for us on our first build. There you go. Dude, look at that. I know Awesomeness. That, yeah, so I know that Will had shared a bunch of different things he had done as an example too, right? You can just 
put in shutdown, you don't have to say sudo shutdown. If you type in the sudo shutdown command, right, it, it waits and to park everything, whereas if you just type in shutdown or reboot, it will do it immediately. Thank um, God I had that window closed because I almost typed that and I would have shut everything down. That would have sucked. <laughs> That would have been funny. It would have been funny, but not too funny. <laughs> All right. Not waiting for that reboot. Is there anything else that we... Actually, you know what? Let's kind of talk a little bit more, too, about the whole mount method and how that impacts and affects things. Um, so, yeah. So, if you're using external storage, we already discussed the fact that with the mount method, it's only doing the ROMs folders. So, if you go into the Retro Arena folder... Um, these other, like the media and these different settings and things like that, none of that moves over to your external drive. Now, we have had some questions uh, in the already with those that have had beta testing that said, well, hey, what about um, the different media? I want to keep that on my, like, for example, my splash screens and stuff. You know, can I keep that? We're not doing it that way. We're trying to keep things as clean as possible at this time. So that's the reason why only the ROMs folder is what's um, moved over in the, in the mount situation. Um, is there anything else? Um, the only thing I can think of is uh, anyone using DOS games are going to have to do a lot of editing. OK. How uh, can you expound uh, on that? To re to readjust all their paths, it's yeah, because all of them are going to Pi, either either going to Pi Gaming ROMs or whatever, not Retro Arena or Retro Pi ROMs. Yeah, so yeah, yeah a lot of those scripts thing, that people same have, thing those with XMLs. have to be edited. Oh yeah, if you don't use uh, relative. Yeah, if you're not using the, uh, the the generic paths, if you're using Pi Gaming as your paths or your XMLs, that's gonna have to go. Yep. Well, the good thing with that is it's easy to do find and replace, right? If you're clever enough, you can use find and replace in Notepad++ and you can fix a lot of that stuff right on the fly. Oh, yeah. I mean, in all reality, you should be using generic repairs anyway. Yes, correct. All right. Um, so talking about this stuff, then we'll roll into just a little bit more about the remove media feature. So if you could go over that a little bit, uh, Q. Um, okay. You want me to switch over to the uh, setup? Yeah, go for it. Okay, cool. Hold on a second. This will go full screen here in a second. Hold on one moment. At least it should, unless it wants to be stupid. There it goes. Yep. All right. Okay. The remove media is actually really cool because um, a lot of people that are using SD cards and stuff like that, they're running out of space quickly. So a lot of these people are downloading ROM packs and media packs, and they don't have all those ROMs. So basically what it does is clean up any media that doesn't match with a ROM. I don't know if it does like a fat match or what, but it basically – removes what's ever needed and updates your game list and it'll also back it up i believe um but it works really well and it's actually pretty quick i'll do it right here real quick um i just let's see here do something small we'll just do like 5200 And that's it. It'll automatically clean it up. Um, I can't show how much space I've done because I've already done it a couple times, but that's pretty much pretty much it. Has anybody else used it or no? I haven't used it. Okay. Um, well, I used it. It didn't delete anything, but I would always suggest that you back up your game list and your ROMs just in case. Yeah, not a bad idea at all. Um, so now we'll uh, take a look here and... You know, we already went over how the themes, how that's kind of being uh, updated as well. Um, oh, we should go over that uh, some themes are just so graphically intensive that when you have 100 systems, it takes an impact on loading. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so that's the thing is, is I mean, if you're going to That's do... an emulation station uh, limitation, yeah. though. It's not us. Right. Yeah, yeah that's a limitation of emulation station. Um you know, regarding how, how that is. That's a very good point. So, you know, people want to be aware of that, that if they if they choose to do a, an extremely robust uh, implementation of the build, you know, there's only so much that it can do on the parsing due to the limitations with uh, emulation stations. So that's a really good point. Um, let's go ahead and move into then the... 
Uh, Might as well go to jukebox for right yeah. here now, anyways. Yeah, let's so. go to the jukebox. Well, that's the so this is the jukebox configuration. So we can actually discuss that in this episode, um, Q, or the next one. It's up to you. I'll leave that on you. Um, that's up to you. I haven't added my songs yet, and I have like 900 songs, so it'll take a long time. So why don't we just wait till the next time? So we're gonna go ahead and move on over to take a look at some of these other systems, starting off with Dragon 32. So go ahead, Qert. So um, just a little, uh, couple of facts about the Dragon 32. It was uh, released in 82. They were out of business by 84, so they did well. And uh, they, they were in direct competition with the ZX Spectrum and the BBC Micro, so they just couldn't hang. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, I wonder why they couldn't. I can't hang. imagine why. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. Some of the Spectrum games are pretty bad, though. So. <laughs> Blabby computer games. <laughs> well, I'm pressing start. There you go. Oh, it's, it was trying to load. Oh my god. Look Jesus that. Christ. <laughs> it's, it's just you guys really suck, man. <laughs> I feel you guys are sadistically doing this on purpose. <laughs> this game my fucking out. pepper, at least. Where the, where the hell's the pepper? <laughs> there we go. There's. A, it looks like you fart. So I try to. You actually have to. You actually have to push the direction you want to sh shoot the pepper with the button at the same time. So oh, interesting. How asinine is that? Yeah. You, that. You're farting hot dog. Is that what you're doing here? Is that what this game is? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I guess I just missed too. So. <laughs> What the fuck? Oh, it just puts him at the restart. Jesus Christ. All right, I think that this one was entered. Do you have any... Do you want to go ahead and go into another game? <laughs> Cause you yeah, seem, sure. You seem like this one's a pretty traumatic experience for you. <laughs> Actually, it was, I was starting to have fun because it was so bad, but uh, it was getting good. You know, oh, nightmares see. about being chased around by a giant hot dog. Well, here we go. Caverns of Doom. Burn. Let's try that one. Uh, you know, let's try Centipede because we all know what it's supposed to look like, so we can see how shit... <laughs> turned out since this is the full name it might be officially licensed maybe oh my god what what <laughs> okay cuz this is the dragon 32 here uh, the dragon 64 is a little bit better and um, that's usually in color let's see if we can find one cuz those are all in the same uh they all run on the same emulator here, so Chucky e. Egg should be well, like good. I said, the, the company only lasted from 82 to 84, and that was with the update. Exactly. That, was, that whole time was in between, so they didn't last that long. Ooh, they got music. They really upped their game. Oh, yeah. I think it's loading and it won't let me. <laughs> yeah, you have to listen to that. Yeah, I just think from a, a historical reference, right? I think that it's really great that we've been able to get some of these more obscure systems going because, you know, you kind of get to see, you know, compared to the the competition that was out there at the time, right? Why some of these systems, you know, just weren't able to make it. But at the same time, you know, there's normally at least a couple gems, right? What, yep. what, are, you, what are you doing, Qbert? You, you, uh, you have to press, it's, it's another one of these things because there, I think it's because the joystick was one of those analog <laughs> ones, kind of like the 5200. Uh -huh. you, have to press left and, you have to press left plus the jump button to jump left. Oh, okay. Like at the same time, you can't just be like moving one way, and like for me to go up this ladder, I have to press up in in the space bar to go up the ladder. And if it's not <laughs> pixel perfect, it's like fucking doesn't work. So yeah. I just I'm, thought you I'm felt not like that bad, guys. I promise. <laughs> I just thought you felt like petting the ostrich. I don't know, man. I was... Is that what that is? That's an ostrich. I think that's a. Might I don't a, know what that. It might be a duck. I don't know. But, yeah, so you kind of get the gist of, of uh, both the black and white and what the games look like here in color. So let's go ahead and move on to the next system, which is uh, Open Bore, 
we know that we've had uh, some excitement come from the Patreons for sure on this one. Um, and this is uh, awesome. They've gotten to, to play around with it some. So there you go, right here, baby. Splatterhouse three. All right, John. So um, this is based on um, these. All these games are based on the uh, Beats of Rage two uh, D game engine, and um, it was released in two thousand and four. And um, the code was actually open sourced in 05, and people started uh, making games. And they're actually really, really cool. It's actually one of my favorite systems on the new build. It looks like this game you got to be careful for if anybody has any types of uh, light sensitivity. <laughs> so this one's That called... would definitely be me, but it was good enough. Back to light, huh? Yeah, this is the third one. There's three different ones that are available so far that I've tested. Let's go with the original, dude. Rick. <laughs> Wake up! See, and another historical bit is that this is where Pickle Rick all decided to come from. <laughs> no. Not really, but... <laughs> I love that pose. So is there uh, any types of tweaking and things that people can do with uh, open bore or how does that all work? Yeah, you could, um, in the beginning of the game, you can go down to the options menu mm -hmm. and you can put some cool filters in and stuff like that. They have, uh, you can, I think you can change the aspect ratio, but uh, I think that's about, about it. You know, you can, you can remap your controls too. You that's can remap your it. controls, yeah. Well, that's but they have a lot of good, like a lot of good scan line filters and stuff. Y yes, they definitely do. Uh, do you guys want me to show that, or do you? Or, or sure, why not? We game? can do that real quick, and then we'll. That is something of note: the uh, having to map your controls. Uh, on this one, I didn't have to map my controls. Neither did I. Uh, I'm trying to get to the menu here. How do I get to the menu? What key on the keyboard goes to the menu? That's what I gotta find out. So uh, that's one of those deals where you're you. This is keyboard play, or it's bolt. It's a mixture of keyboard and con control. Keyboard, if you want to do any kind of options. Okay. Editing. You gotta. Uh, I think you gotta get out of this game. And yeah, I'm trying to relaunch it from the beginning. There. Yeah. There we go. Make it easier, quick and easy. Mm -hmm. So you got some video options. That's where you would do your display mode, full screen, automatic. I, don't, I wouldn't chase, change any of that. Only thing I would mess with would be the right here, the software filter, which is your scan lines and stuff, mm -hmm. and then your 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 full screen type. That was the, the only thing I'd mess go with. Through a couple of them, Q. See what, see what, see a simple two x bilinear. You probably won't be able to tell much yeah, based on the thing yeah, yeah, until you get to there. Let's see which one's on there. High quality. There's regular. See, that one you can tell the difference on. <laughs> that one you can definitely tell the difference on. There you go. Yeah. Hmm. So, so it looks like there's uh, plenty of different little nerd knobs. Plenty of different to filter. Ones. Yeah, and then you can change the background music and stuff like that under that. Let's see what's under advanced options. Change the frequency rate, which you won't have to because we're not having any problems with sound dropping out or anything. So. All right. Control, that's where you would map your option, you know, your controls. What okay. is... Oh, and this is just uh, system settings. Okay. All right, cool. Yeah, so, um, never been in, so. Let's go ahead and uh, actually here kind of jump in between showing uh, systems and let's show the uh, the Ozone interface here for... Okay. Well, we got to go into a LR. Yeah. Let's go into... Might as well just go into a system that we're going to do a video that has LR. So uh, uh, SC3000. Sure. There we go. I'll go there and let's get some bomb jack going on because I love bomb jack. And then I'll show you guys the SC3000 was released in 1983 in Japan. First and only computer developed by Sega. 
And it was basically a SC-1000, but with built-in keyboard and support for more hardware expansion. All right, and here's the uh, the GUI here that you guys were so referring is, to. This is the ozone dark, right? And then there's an ozone light as well. Right. Um, so and it's it, definitely it actually, it's a little streamlined better, I think. I like it. I yeah, really it's, enjoy it's it. definitely more intuitive or more pleasant to the eye than than the uh, old R GUI. So, all right, man, let's get into some gameplay then. The the light version of that team is hard on the eyes. Oh, okay. Ah, Jesus Christ! Give me! Oh, wow. <laughs> Name it! What, what is the fuck is wrong with me? Huh? Well, I just wanted to get the power thing, but basically you just uh, you defuse all the bombs and avoid everything else. But if you do that, you get bonus. And if you do them in the order that they're blowing up, you get a even higher bonus. It's based off the arcade game. It's really a good game. And uh, the fourth level has um, an actual Beatles song that was actually taken out. Oh, really? So, yeah, Lady Godiva. Uh, I think it is or something like that. The song is something about Lady Godiva or something like that. Yeah, is in uh, level four. That's a really cool game. But SC3000 uh, has a lot of cool games. A lot of good um, ports, go ahead, actually. Yeah, let's go ahead and show another one. Choplifter's actually pretty good on it. Oh, I should have showed Guzzler, because that wasn't even ported to anything else that I know of. You can still show Guzzler that Guzzler was an arcade game, yeah. It was a good arcade game. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it's doing the... Uh... Not unless you're talking. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no, no, the helicopter came, Q. <laughs> Pretty good perspective on this version. And it's really smooth and fast, and it actually controls well, too. Except for when I run into the ground like that. So. <laughs> controls well as he dies. Yeah. <laughs> and I like the uh, effects where you're actually shooting the ground, if you notice the dirt coming up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, dude! <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to Guzzler. Have you guys ever played Guzzler on the arcade? I think that I might have actually at Retropalooza one of these years. I'll have to take a look at it and tell you for sure. Actually, you know what we should do Hero, because everybody knows Hero from Activision, and this the, the character's all goofy looking. He looks like a Fisher-Price toy. It's funny. Watch this. Most people wouldn't know Guzzler, probably, anyways. <laughs> look at it. Doesn't it look like a Fisher-Price toy or something? <laughs> Doesn't look like what you're used to seeing. Looks like a it, Playmobil character. There you go. That's what I was going for. There you go. But what's cool is it actually has background music. You guys probably can't hear it because I'm talking, but. But it has a it's full play uh, uh, music. So it looks like a Fisher Price version of Hero. That's what it looks like to me. Hmm. But it's officially licensed. It's got the Activision logo at the bottom. Oh, crap. I keep pressing the wrong button. I'm so used to pressing down, like on the Commodore 64 or the uh, 2600 version. Because they don't usually have two buttons. And I did it again. All right. Let's go to another system. <laughs> All right. So then we're, we'll go ahead and get back in order. We'll go ahead and move to Philips CDI. Okay. Did you want to do the teleview now that we're here, so I don't scroll all the way through? Oh, that's fine. Go for it. You can just go ahead. You might as well do some front and trigger here. CDI released in. Uh... Oh no, oh, we're, we're doing, doing teleview, yeah. man. Sorry. What so are we doing with teleview? Yes, yeah. teleview. My bad. No, that was my bad, dude. I jumped out of order. So teleview released in '95 in Japan. Add on for the Super Famicom. 
It was actually a satellite subscription service. And, I, you know, I read up about it to see what it was all about, and I really don't even understand it, really. It was kind yeah, of well, weird. Yeah, so essentially, I know a little bit more about it myself. Um, it was Nintendo's first real push at trying to do um, game streaming, but not really streaming, right? It was digital-only content. Um, you had to have the subscription service, and they would release games each each month or whatever. It was all done with... I think, trying to remember, I think it was like a 4,800 or maybe even 56K maximum baud on the modem, but I think it might have even been at like 28.8. But since yeah. the games are so small still, just a couple megs a piece, you know, it, it took like 10 or 15 minutes or whatever it was to download them and you'd be able to start playing them. Yeah, um, and they said that, uh, that like the company that they worked with uh, to you know, to supply the signal, it was like you had to be, it was like a certain time of the day yeah. that they would, you know, that they would beam this signal out and, and you know, the Satellaview would would decode it or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. But you have to be, like, you have to be on at that certain time of the day. So it was... Yeah, it was and some of them were also it. time demos, too. Some of them were time demos. Like, some of these games you can't play unless you reset the timer, the internal clock. Yeah, um, because they were timed demos of like ten minutes and stuff like that. Hmm. Actually, I think, I think the most this is well-known one. ones are the the Zelda ones. Yeah, this is a good game, by the way, guys. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the name, but it's a very, very good game. There's been a lot of work to rebuild that Zelda one. Oh, yeah, the Zelda one. Yeah, I can show that here in a second. Hold on one moment. What is with the light up shoulders? I don't know. It's, it's cool, though. It's a great game, though. Light. Okay, we'll go to the Zelda games. Everybody knows. Did I see a Mario Paint? Yeah, there's some Mario Paint stuff in there. There's a whole bunch oh. of other good stuff. Well, that didn't work, so that's great. I guess we're going to go to Mario. Where was that, Mario? I don't think there's a proper full copy of the Zelda game out there. I don't think there is either. I think that's why that crashed. Uh, we can do Ninja Kun though instead. That's a good one. Good old Jalico. Easy game, basically. All you do is capture these sperms for some reason. I don't. That's what they look like. They look like a sperm to me. I don't know. I guess they're spirits. <laughs> I don't know. They're like little sperm things. But sperm, spirits, whatever. Yeah, you know, same thing, whatever. Uh, but uh, basically, you get to the end of the level, but they all tend to just go up, and you power up, of course, by, I guess, eating your sperm or spirits, whatever. <laughs> yeah. so now I have sperm power. There we go. Well, if you think about it, I mean, that's... <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> the little guy can't jump very well when he's big. Well, he's a bit heavier, you know. He's yeah. full, full of sperm. <laughs> so, yeah. Cum guzzler. I, I love, what the I fuck? Love <laughs> feudal Japan. I guess we're definitely going to have to put a disclaimer at the beginning of this one for foul language. <laughs> Could you add, like, yeah, get over it. Look it over it. <laughs> well, all right, let's go ahead and move How's on. How's the soundtrack on that? 
It's actually pretty cool, but it's it's re very repetitive. It's the same one over. You can tell where they cut costs. Uh, yeah, but um, the, like... the 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 other game, like the F Zero, has really good soundtrack and stuff. Okay, so now are we going over to CDI now? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. All right, CDI was released in '91, and uh, the critics didn't really love this one. I mean, uh, it was a harsh criticism of the hardware, the software. Yeah, the CDI thing. was what I think six ninety nine to start, and it, and it yeah, was, it was ranked, ridiculous. It was ranked the, first, the fourth worst console by PC Magazine. Yeah, and and I think they said that with inflation, that would be like two thousand dollars now. Yeah, it's pretty I, damn shit. I'm just you're starting with Zelda. Yep, have to, buddy. <laughs> if it decides to run now, it was just running a few seconds ago. There it goes. I'm like, what the hell's going on? Yeah, this is another one of those disc-based systems, though, of course, where they uh, they take a, a hot minute to really get into anything. And a lot of people don't realize you have to actually click the play button. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you have to make sure you um, press tab and go to input this machine and make sure you have a joystick mouse one and two, mouse button one and two. Or Otherwise, you're not going to be able to start anything from within inside of the menu. <laughs> I just use my key, my mouse and on my keyboard. Yeah, that too. But if you want to use your key, if you just want to use a joypad, you know, just with the analogs, that's the only reason I do it. But I'm using a keyboard right now because it's much easier. So. Lord. <laughs> <laughs> that Zelda can stay in a print in a castle. She's ugly. If only they could hear this too. <laughs> well, I, oh shit, I'm not recording it. So otherwise, I was gonna say you could hear it. We could turn it up a little bit. Yeah, that's all right. They, they'll, uh, I'm sure there's other videos out there, and you yeah. know, of uh, the CDI I, system. If you really wanna like spoil wow. it for yourself you can always look on youtube to see because people have shared captures of these and stuff oh yeah definitely yeah i can't remember either like, like dragon with, shit what the hell with this you can't uh could you skip ahead did you just do that or no yeah i just skipped ahead okay i seem to recall this one was weird in that like you could only do it sometimes or something yeah it, it really is weird i i and this whole layers thing is going to be a bitch right now. I can tell you right now. <laughs> Fucking stupid shit. <laughs> oh, that was some awesome collision detecting. <laughs> one, two, oh, so it killed him in one shot this time. I don't understand that. Well, I think that was another big complaint about the CDI base games anyway, right? Is that yeah. you know, it's that was like a really big thing was that hitboxes, collision detection. <laughs> um, you know, this is one of the first It's like the bad version of the 3DO. Suppose, yeah, it is. yeah. I mean, this it is insane. Say. Wasn't it like one of the first what was considered to be more advanced uh CD-based gaming systems? Yes. I, uh, yeah, it has like the MPEG cards and stuff like that. Uh, that's one thing that ours doesn't support. If the game was MPEG support, where you had to have the MPEG, it doesn't work. Yeah. On here. I had thought this game did. Huh? No, this one doesn't. The other Zelda one does. The one with that it's it's top down like Gauntlet. Oh okay. That one requires it. Yeah. Which that's kind of a bummer because wasn't that one at least I think. No, it loaded like painting. every five seconds. No, no, it loaded every five seconds. So you know how like on like in the Nintendo it actually uh, you know the uh, um, you know on Zelda where it scrolls to the next screen or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, it would take 15 seconds to scroll to the next scene. Oh okay. It was it was horrible, dude. It was just, oh. All right, so yeah, let's move on to another game here in a quick, <laughs> yeah. and then uh... I was actually starting to enjoy it. I was actually getting used to it for a little bit. Um, we can do um. Here we go, micro machines.
I used to like that game for Nintendo. Oh, it's a lot of fun, yeah. Yeah. First time I played it, though, was on an Amiga. Yeah, I, I had a ton of fun with it on the, the Nintendo. Because you could even do, was it, I, you could do two-player with it. Yep. I always liked the boats, using the boats. I was always more of an RC Pro-Am and Revolt fan. Yeah, see, I can't get into Revolt for some reason. I don't know. It's, like, too easy to, like, get behind. Like, as soon as you, like, if you spin out once in Revolt, it drives me nuts. Because, like, I can never catch up. That's just probably me sucking, though, so. No offense There's to the game. There's a huge community for it. I oh, mean, yeah, I was going to say, they have a really big, uh, like, a home like, like, tracks and, like, people and everything, right? Yeah. Um, what I like, though, is if we could get it running, it would, um on DOSBox would be uh, Pod. Did you guys ever play Pod back in the day? Uh, I played the Star Wars Pod Racers. Oh, no, it's, it's a really, really good... Um, um, it's a really good futuristic racer, but it had a huge um, online base following with a whole bunch of tracks and stuff. Believe it or not, um, Lazy Game Reviews... Um, actually had a whole website dedicated just on how to run it on a modern system. Hmm. It's that much of a pain? Uh, well, not anymore. Now, goodoldgames.com, you can just buy it at goodoldgames.com. And it's already pre-configured, but at the time it was, yeah. It won't run on DOSBox? Um, I don't know. I haven't tested it yet, so I'll have to test it. I have a good old games version of it, so I might as well test it. Wow. It looked better on Nintendo. <laughs> it actually did. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I like the environments. Yeah. The boats, uh, not so much. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, let's move over to Poke Mini. I think that's yeah. our last one, right? For this episode? Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. That's I can go all night now. All right. Poke Mini, released in 2001. Nintendo's smallest game system with an interchangeable carts. Um, it has an internal real-time clock, an IR port for multiplayer, a read switch for detecting shakes, and a motor for, uh, for force feedback. Hmm. Not bad for a little uh, a little unit, right? No, not bad at all. See, I've just never been into Pokemon. Um, both yeah, my kids were into it, but you know, then again, you know, I've I've met some guys, adults that are in their mid forties, like I am, and very, I've met a few that were into it. Um, most of them, though, I've met they're into the card game. Uh, from when we've gone to play Magic: The Gathering, or I've done, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh games and tournaments with my son. I just find some of these little games kind of fun to play, though. Like I, I rather enjoy. There's Pokemon Race, and there's the uh, card game, uh, Pokemon. Zen. I don't know what the hell I'm doing here. <laughs> I think it's just flying. But, but what's the point? <laughs> I, it's kind of like Game & Watch. There's no real point other than to just get points. Right, I just don't know what I was doing to get points. Oh, I think I have to press the button really fast and get up to a certain size. Yeah. Alright, let's try a different game. <laughs> let's try something that might be a little more... We don't need the breeders. Ten balls, good. Okay, uh, there we go. The Tetris one's good too. Is it cool? Yeah, so we can check out the the pinball here, and then we can go check out Tetris, and that'll probably be good. Yep. Pinball on this thing is one of the first things I usually run when I <laughs> set up a new system. Looks like a little penis. <laughs> it's, 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 that did not look right. Or big what toe. <laughs> How do you play this game? So the goal, the I think, is... Each of those holes. Yeah, you gotta get it into each one of the All holes. three of the holes? Oh, oh okay, gotcha. This I looks like... the it. record was 15 seconds. <laughs> wow. Uh, Take some skill. 
Almost. <laughs> Are you freaking shitting me? <laughs> this is this is Qbert's uh, version of Airwolf on the the Poke Mini. Oh no, I'm gonna show you guys the, my version of Airwolf on the Pokemon. Say on the Pokemon Mini, but uh, we gotta show ColecoVision's uh, looping. That's the most infuriating game I've played in a long time. Q, you should do a series of videos as you should play video games. I watch it. <laughs> <I'm> just... <laughs> Fucking finally, <There> <laughs> Jesus! One minute, Time's up. ten seconds, <laughs> and we all now have five o'clock shadows. There you go. <laughs> all right, go ahead and yeah, let's go into Tetris there. <laughs> yeah, I ain't doing that shit again. Fuck that. <laughs> and believe it or not, I enjoy that game. <laughs> hey, whatever, man. <laughs> I could see where this could be fun on that little handheld, though. These these little oh yeah, definitely, especially then. in the '90s. Yeah, especially yeah. in the '90s and shit. And my kids had Tamagotchis too, and I never really understood the premise of those, but they loved them. This was 2001, though. Out of the '90s. Well, I've already fucked it up. <laughs> boop 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 boop. It's actually got a nice little song, too. That's cool. What is that thing that the little pointers keep pointing to on the right? I have, it's maybe a Pokemon. Yeah, it's probably a Pokemon. Yeah. It, it's a reference to the to every time there's a commercial in the show. Who's that Pokemon? Oh. If you yeah. clear four lines, you'll catch that Pokemon. Oh, oh nice. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's a nice little twist. Yeah. Not that we'll ever see but, you uh, do don't that. Expect but... to, uh, yeah, I was going to say, don't expect me to catch any of those. No. I hope you're not... Uh... Q apparently, bees, apparently seems yeah, to be more of the... Uh, right there. There you, go. Uh, you know... Square peg round hole kind of guy. <laughs> well, I'm starting to get a little bit of traction. Yeah, I'll get there. I want to see that Pokemon before we call it quits. That ain't gonna happen. I don't think so. Dude, what are you doing? I'm just. Come on, Q. You got this. Trying to wait for you guys to get pissed off at me until I quit. Rage quit. Oh. <laughs> you haven't even gotten a single line yet. <laughs> I'm not worried about it. <laughs> this Pokemon, the reason why he's bouncing every so often. Dude, it's giving like, me one on. straight one. That's it. That is it. That is all it's giving me. Oh, so we'll put it. We'll put a challenge out to the community see if anybody can beat Q's high score. <laughs> I, I'm sure everybody can beat my high score on this shit. <laughs> oh, finally! Surprising level. Fuck you people. all! <laughs> <laughs> I got something. <laughs> yeah. You do have a point, though, man. It's it's relatively sparse on the. Uh... For sure. On the uh, straight on pieces. The, yeah, yeah. The straight pieces. Nothing for that. There you go. You'll catch the next one. There you go. Ha ha! <laughs> That's actually pretty cool. Well, all right. Let's what a go comeback. Ahead. What a comeback. What a comeback. Yeah, let's pop out of this because we don't have another 27 minutes to wait for you to get another four lines. Ha, 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 ha. But now I'm having fun. Hold on one second. <laughs> Damn it. That was actually going good, too. <laughs> but all right. Let's see. Uh, yeah, so. Sh shall we punish myself? Oh, yeah. If you want to show that last one, and then we're going to go ahead and call it quits for the, the episode. Oh, you guys go ahead and talk. You guys can just watch me fail miserably here. Watch this. Mm -hmm. It's hilarious. It's funny. I see I that Coco system, and all I can think of is Team Coco from, you know, uh, well, I just keep saying, I'm in love with the Coco. I just keep doing uh, that shit. <laughs> Conan O'Brien. I have absolutely nothing that comes to mind. <laughs> uh, looping. Uh... Although I'm still mad about giving away my TRS-80. 
Oh man, I love I love the TRS radio. I hated it when I was growing up, but I had a Commodore at the time. When I had a TRS yeah. eighty color computer still in box. Oh nice. And I gave it away like ah. a year ago. Yeah, so talking about the TRS eighty, well, um uh Q is about to do a little bit of self punishment here apparently. <laughs> um <laughs> Oh my God, that was that was <laughs> wonderful. Uh, what's going to be coming up in episode, uh, or excuse me, in part three of our preview uh, that will get recorded here in the next couple days, hopefully, uh, all goes well. We will be showing off the jukebox, um, and then for systems, we're going to be going over the pet computer. Uh, Scum VM has a new LR core. The Super Game Boy, the Super Vision, the SNES MSU One, the Sufami. Jesus Christ! The uh, the, the Crash Eighty, um, the the Tandy Color Computer, the TI Ninety Nine, which can use disc now, and the and the Vic Twenty. So uh, on this you guys rather don't know the struggle to keep this plane in the air. On this rather entertaining note, um, I'm going to go ahead and. Say that we hope that uh, folks out there enjoyed the video and, and seen some of these new systems that we're going to have going on. Um, Fuck. Q's going to have nightmares of balloons and. Uh, My dogs chasing. The longest I've stayed in the air. I I'm yeah. proud. High score. Oh, fuck. Everything's like all ass backwards, and you have but. to like press either up or down. oh fuck this. Gonna have those monochrome eggs in his. But uh, <laughs> yes, <yeah>. exactly. <laughs> so all right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and call it a, a a day on this. And as always, we appreciate the community, uh, those people on the team that uh, help make this happen, uh, our Patreon supporters, the other folks in the community as well that have been uh, donating their time, making dedicated themes and and whatnot. And uh, even if we fail to mention you every so often, it doesn't mean that we've forgotten about you or that uh, it's not appreciated. So in that regard... Holy shit. <laughs> Q's about to go to... where. Oh, no... damn it! Oh, man. Right. You're, you're about I've to go to... This a... far, dude. I've been trying this all day. <laughs> yeah. It, it, uh, to call it quits here, Q is about to go where no Q has gone before. I guess so. Uh... Take care. <laughs>